At its peak, the Cape Town Central Line was responsible for the transportation of an estimated half a million commuters. It has been described as an essential passenger rail corridor in the country. In a new documentary by News24, the prolonged closure of the line and other challenges come into sharp focus. The documentary explores the financial and human cost of the closure. Let's take a look. Listen. It is an extremely violent environment. We are paying through our lives and blood in order to get that particular corridor run. We started experiencing this construction site hijack. People with AK-47s come to the station and they tell you you have to leave now. If you don't comply, then violence is perpetrated against you. Two of our colleagues were shot, and they remain paralyzed to this day. The consistent neglect from a security point of view led to high levels of vandalism, which left the line open and vacant to gangsters to take control. It became a cesspit of crime, and this is why people die on this railway line. We have train drivers murdered. We even have security guards murdered. It is a cocktail of murder and mayhem. And the mayhem is the destruction of infrastructure. Louisa would fight with them, but unfortunately, they did not uh, protect him. He's gone now, and he's gone forever. To get another Louisa under these circumstances, where gangsters are there, like uh, lions, in that railway life gonna be a very tough road. It will be like you are climbing in a steep uh, mountain. And that is in part the work of News24 journalist and documentary photographer Luke Daniel. He joins us now to speak more on this. Luke, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. It's one thing to look at visuals. It's another thing to be in that environment. What did your spirit pick up the moment you entered? Well, it's a, a very volatile uh, situation. And it's unusual because the central line... Um, as you said, was, was, was the busiest in the country um, for a long time, and, and it's now been vacant, um, and the trains aren't running. So there's an eerie stillness around that in, entire line, um, but certainly you can feel that there's a tension there um, between the communities, between uh, process staff, um, and, and, and just between the elements that, that surround that central line. There's definitely a volatility there. There's a settlement right next to it. There's a settlement right on it at, at three points um, on the central line, at Lunga, Philippi, and, and, and Kailitsha. Um, and those settlements really kind of flourished and boomed during the lockdown um, that started in March 2020. Uh, the biggest challenge that Prasa has faced in, in reopening this line is relocating those households, which have ballooned to several thousand uh, over the past couple of years. Hmm. And what is life like for the people that live there? Well, life is incredibly, incredibly tough. There's no toilets, there's no running water, there's very little electricity. Um, and these are really just extensions um, and the expansion of settlements that were already bordering on the line um, prior to, to 2020 and prior to that lockdown. Um, so the conditions, uh, it's, it's in impoverished um, communities across that line, um, and they're now being moved slowly but surely, uh, relocated to different areas, but um, the situation where they're being relocated to is not that much better. It's, it's a temporary solution. Mm. Uh, that's maybe even superficially the human cost of it, right? So maybe if we take a look at um, the the cost in terms of what has been lost because that line is not working. Have you been able to calculate that? I mean, that's been, to calculate it would be in the billions um, of rands from lost productivity, from unemployment, um, and then, you know, essentially keeping communities in a cycle of poverty because mm. uh, commuters can no longer get to work. Um, the 
commuters who can still get to work and can afford to get to work are really just making ends meet. They're traveling to work and working just to get to work. Um, so it's an unsustainable situation, and it has been for a number of years. Um, the cost to Cape Town, the cost to the country, the, the, the economy is, is massive, and the human cost to, to yeah. individuals that live in Kailicha and Yanga and Philippi and Mitchell's Plain, um, really it can't be understated. How did things get to this point? Well, to understand how we got to a point where the line is dysfunctional and, and really has become a, a kind of hotbed of crime and, and violence, we have to go back to the state capture years. And, and Prasa, like so many other state-owned entities, um, was hollowed out by corruption and nepotism. Um, and in the case of Prasa specifically, uh, it was around security contracts. And these security contracts were abruptly cancelled um, at the end of 2019 um, without a backup plan, without a plan B. And so the line was left open to criminal elements and within a matter of months, overhead cables, kilometers of overhead cables were stolen. Stations were stripped to bare concrete. Um, and along with that, uh, communities essentially occupied the line. Those communities that were already encroaching on that line uh, because the trains weren't running um, and there was no security uh, and the need for housing and land uh, those communities um, took over that space and, and, and called it home. And really, since then, it's been a massive struggle to reopen that line, to relocate those communities. And we've seen in, in, in that process um, there have been murders, there's been extortion, uh, intimidation. Hmm. When we speak of state capture, how much of a responsibility is also or should be shouldered by the government of the Western Cape. More so when you take a look at the housing issue, right, and you look at spaces like Langa, like Nyanga. For a number of years now, the situation has not shifted. What, what do we put that down to? Right, so certainly there is a housing crisis in Cape Town. Uh, and the city and both the provincial government definitely do uh, need to shoulder responsibility for that. Um, of course, the situation as it currently stands is, is effectively a legacy of apartheid spatial planning, where the poorest of citizens and working class are furthest away from economic, economic opportunities. Um, and only recently we've seen the Western Cape government come together with Prasa to try and figure out a, a situation um, that can see the line reopen and essentially relocate those, those households. Um, but it has been slow progress and it, it, it hasn't been done fast enough. And the solution that we're currently at, again, is a temporary one where communities that live on the line and are close to the railway line um, are effectively relocated to, to temporary shelter, um, which as I said earlier, isn't much better um, mm. than, than where they currently are. Mm. Because today is the railway line, tomorrow it's a mountain, what's next? And so at the heart of the issue, um, that's what needs to be looked at as well. Thank you very much, Luke, for your time this afternoon. News 24 journalist and documentary photographer, Luke Daniel.